Jessica, you're back home. Lovely weather in Bermuda. Yeah. Not that, not that, not that, uh, that white stuff in, uh, <laughs> in Canada? <laughs> nope. Yeah, that white stuff is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, we all know that you're on the verge of getting the uh, approval or the confirmation of going to Rio, but you're counting the days down for number one, that, that the, the phone call, the email, yep. and then getting to Rio. What's your preparation been like in the lead up to that? Uh, just lots and lots and lots of training. Um, I My school year is done now, so I've stopped going to the gym lifting weights um, and just focusing mainly in my track year now, uh, doing different pushes and stuff. Um, so I'm going to be moving into the apartment that we have in Mississauga and training with my coach full time. Um, we'll probably uh, be training about five or six days a week. Yeah. Now, how do you transition that? Well, first of all, let's talk a little bit about school. Um, it's also it's always a challenge trying to balance school and being an athlete um, how did you make out this year oh good yeah um, I just take about three courses a semester just to balance it all out um, I'm kind of on the six-year plan right now so next year will be my last year um, at school and then I have to do an internship after that before I can graduate so yeah are you able to say what you're taking up uh, therapeutic recreation now let's talk a little bit about the, the track side and, uh, and your preparations. Obviously, Coach Ken is a bit of a, a hard one. <laughs> but uh, how, how does he actually push you and drive you to be better than what you think you can be? Um, I mean, he's just always there motivating you and um, yelling at you when you're training. So that definitely helps motivate you. And just having my teammates around also helps as well because we all push each other. And um, it's actually pretty funny. We were struggling um, a few weeks ago in one of the sessions and he was yelling at us. He's like, just remember why you're doing this. And I just was so tired and I was like, because we're dumb. That's why we're doing it. But it was really fun. Yeah. yeah. You recently had a chance to um, have a session uh, or, or a, a, a talk with, with Bermudians uh, at the BUEI with Coach Ken. What was what was that like? Being up on stage talking about yourself, and and obviously getting getting words from Coach Ken as well to to the audience. I mean, Coach Ken is an amazing speaker, and it was it's just always so awesome to listen to him and and how he motivates people and motivates us and keeps us going. Um, and I just enjoy talking about track all the time. Like I love talking about it, so it was pretty awesome. And I just enjoy getting the awareness out of the sport and para sport in Bermuda and and kind of um, showing people that things are possible if you work hard. It was about a month ago um, you wrote a message about disability yep. ability disability can you elaborate a little bit more on on just that okay so I wanted to change disability to differently abled um, just because it's a little bit more positive and it puts the person first and it looks at their abilities and not what their limitations are because I feel that everybody has a disability I mean um, by definition it can be something that you're not able to do so if someone's not able to snap their fingers doesn't that mean they have a disability so why why are we focusing just on a disability of somebody and not their ability yeah. how has that message been received very good <laughs> yeah I actually um, got an interview um, from the Romanian magazine and the guy sent me the questions and he put it in there differently abled individuals and I was like that's awesome <laughs> yeah what are you doing in the lead up to Rio to prepare yourself uh, for the events in which you've qualified for? Uh, just training, um, just keeping focused um, and I'm really looking forward to when the racing starts so that we actually know specifics of what we need to work on um, and things like that because in the off season you kind of just work on a bunch of different things um, and see how it plays out and then you can pick out the specific parts that you need to work on when you race. When does race season start for you? Uh, May 13th, I think, is the first one in Arizona. Yeah. You had such an explosive 2016, 15. Yeah. <laughs> um, you think you could emulate or even go better than what you've done? You think that's possible? I definitely do. Um, I mean, last year just gave me so much more confidence that I can be up there with the fast girls in my classification. So I'm really looking forward to getting back and racing. Yeah. Now we've seen, well I've been watching or looking at the, the parasite of, of the games and how everyone's preparing. I'm, I'm tuned in a lot to Great Britain and, and others, but um, looking at the field of the T53, yep. um, it looks as if some special things may happen. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, 
the end of last year I was ranked third in the world for the 100, so definitely hoping for that. Um, it'll be my first event at Rio, so that's a little nerve-wracking, but um, I'm excited to get my first one there and get going, yeah. Now, there is some talk, and we have to be very careful how we, how we say this, but there is some talk that you possibly could have a teammate there. Yes. Um, how awesome would that be to not be the only one from Bermuda at the Paralympic Games in Rio? Absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's just so amazing that Parasport is growing, and I'm so, so proud of you, Shay. Yeah, yeah, she's worked really hard. Yeah, and just, and you obviously were with them at the Pan Am, Parapan Games, um, building a relationship and a, and a friendship. Um, what, is, what is the friendship and the relationship like amongst you guys? Um, I mean, I met Yusha a long time ago through Windreach, um, incredible organization, and um, so just seeing her grow as an athlete has been absolutely amazing, and to have someone there and actually be able to cheer for Bermuda at one of these events is absolutely amazing. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's relive that moment. I know your mom has over and over and over and over. The 100 at, in, in Toronto. Um, you're on the start blocks, uh, you're looking straight down, yeah. you give the camera a little wave, but do you go that over that again and again in your mind? I do, yeah, and I still sometimes can't believe that that was me. Cause like when you're watching the race, you're like, wow, like I'm actually moving pretty quick. <laughs> like you don't, see, you don't really realize that. And I still get like my heart still goes when I think about it. And um, just having that false start too that we had was right. really nerve wracking and had to regroup for that. But it was it was an amazing race, yeah. One thing I've noticed over the years of watching you is for that particular race and and in the in the world championships your start was like on the money yeah. is that something that you've worked hard at yeah definitely um starts are definitely um huge especially in the hundred because you don't have much forgiveness if you don't have a good start um but my starts kind of just clicked last year we don't really know what happened but it just clicked and we were like wow like this is pretty awesome and um I felt a little bit sluggish um, in training when we were working on the starts um, previously, but this whole season we've been working on longer stuff, so um, we're definitely going to start working on starts again. But um, I had a race uh, at training camp, and my start was really good in that race, so that gave me a lot of confidence there that I still had it. So. All right, well, we look forward to what you're going to do May 13th and obviously progression through. So uh, let's, let's hope for a great 2016. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs>